Somebody says, before I say it, before I say it, some, someone posted a comment saying, Adrian, that maniac will laugh. A bit deranged. I'm sorry, it's just me. Hello, YouTubers. Hello, world. It's getting colder. The heating's costing more. The electricity's costing more. And uh, the politicians are fiddling while Rome is burning. So, uh, before I go into what I want to talk about today, um, there's lots of people in comments. There's a, there's a couple of main themes that's going through uh, the comments on the videos. I'm going to tackle one of them. And one of them is that uh, Mark, Mark, has... Uh, oh, yeah, I want to tackle that. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll do the same in the, in the video when I tackle the source. But um, someone said, you're being disrespectful. What? Don't you get humour or don't you have any? I bet you're the kind of person that uses your personality as contraception. It's an old gag. Mark, Mark, I sound like a dog with a hair lip. That's I sound like a dog with a hair lip. Not a bark, but a mark. Now, it's an old gag. It's been around for a long time. It's not about a particular person. I'm saying I sound like. Is humour a challenge to you? Is that a difficulty for you? Stay with the channel. I hope to be able to work with you to bring out your personality. Anyway, uh, so the, the source that I've asked for, the people go, oh, well, Google yourself. Really? Are you that stupid? Stupid is, a stupid does. Um, and there is a reason why I asked for the source. That will all be explained in the next video, which I'm going to record after this one, and you'll be able to tell because I'll be wearing the same jumper. Uh, somebody <laughs> said in one of the comments uh, for the video that I uploaded yesterday, Adrian, are you on speed? No, coffee. Very strong <laughs> coffee. So, uh, thank you to everyone for your likes, your subscriptions, your indulgence and your comments, all of them. They're wonderful. They're brilliant. Because what I'm going to try and do with this channel is evolve it. Not evolve it past Alex Belfield, but we'll do all the stuff as well as the Belfield videos. Because the Belfield situation is going to keep on giving for years to come. Years. And those that try to defend him, I'll just make videos about it. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And I will also say there's stuff happening in the background that I won't always bring to the YouTube videos or vlogs as seemingly they're called because there is no need. And it legally might get me into trouble and I'm not a man for that. I never have. Irregardless of what you read in the press. And oh, by the way, I'll say this to you because I'm itching to do that other video. So you're quoting a press article from 20 years ago when you know categorically that the press has been lying to you in perpetuity, not just the last two and a half years, that's what the press does. It lies, except the only thing that they never get wrong is the price on the front. So just remember that when you're going, oh, they're and you're racist and sexist and homophobic. Please, give your head a wobble. Anyway, Simon, double O, double O. Adrian, what some people don't realise is YouTube pays 10,000 to 18,000 for a million views. What? Depending on how big the channel is. Times that by 300 million views, as Alex Belfield has claimed, he's not short of a penny or three. I agree with you. As a benchmark, you can expect to make around three to five dollars per 1,000 views. About £2.50 to £4.10 in uh, UK money per 1,000 views at the time of writing this comment. This means that 1 million views equals three to $5,000. Or between two and a half grand and 4100 to we Brits. And that's taken from my own account uh, in 1,000 views. So thank you for that, Simon. Just to kind of give me a ballpark. Thank you. Um, Jedekiah says, and, and this theme runs through a lot of comments uh, on the videos, and, and I agree with some of what Jedekiah is saying. Adrian, Belfield 
was good entertainment in a dark period, that's for sure. I never took a lot of his comments literally, especially the ones that involved himself, like suing the BBC, details of his court case, and the current Mrs Belfield. There's never been a Mrs Belfield, nor will they. But some of his more general news stories, including his phone-ins, could be very interesting. I know, he learned from the best. It was obvious he lacked respect for many celebrities, and I think he does for people in general. The way he pals up to those celebrities in those earlier celebrity interviews, then tears them apart in his Voice of Reason videos, shows how two-faced he really is. Now, there's an element within that, Jedekiah, that I agree with. The reason why yesterday's video had a picture of him and Katie Price is because You've all seen how he tore into Harvey and Katie Price. And yet, when he had his picture taken with her, he's not an iconoclast. He's not. He's not intelligent enough. But what young Alex did with his channel is he recognised that if he said certain things, it got so many views. And if he kept it narrow, it got lots of views. And the more views he got the more money he made. And that's why he made a lot of money, because he was just regurgitating the same old, same old. Didn't evolve anywhere. Same old, same old. From BG Anonymous, question Adrian. What do you say about the radio authority which reprimanded you and LBC back in 2003 for comments on air you made regarding, regarded by some listeners as racist? I'm guessing since you mentioned the question about the watchdog, and didn't cut it out, that you're happy to answer the question if asked the right way. BG Anonymous. Yes, of course. That's why I've said I'm going to do a video dedicated to it. And I'm going to absolutely rip it to shreds. Because I didn't make the racist remarks. The callers did. It wasn't me. Sexist? I asked a question on there. Oh, and the response was wonderful. Wonderful. Homophobic, wasn't proven, wasn't upheld. So, the video's coming with my response. Greg Romford. Adrian, this is all beginning to get very Belfield-esque. For your premise, Greg. He was my phone op. He spent years studying me. So it's bound to be Belfield-esque. Because Belfield was very Allen-esque, including all of my lines, including my on-air styling. He nicked it. Now, I could take it as a compliment, as an homage. An homage to how good I was on air. And that is borne out by the amount of listeners that I had all over the country whether it was Century Radio in the North East, where my phone-ins were getting more listeners than all the other radio stations in that market combined at the time I was on air. Whether it was Century 106 in the East Midlands, where the managing director sent me a letter, and I still have it somewhere in my archive, which says, you single-handedly turned around an ailing radio station by sheer force of personality. The lunchtime phone-in was extraordinary. And that's where Belfield learned. He watched me. So me being Belfield-esque? Give your head a wobble. Someone called Mark asked you if there's any validity in certain claims made against you, apart from the fact you then proceeded to take the Mickey out of his name. No, I didn't. I cracked a gag. It's a joke. Didn't you get it? Obviously not. You demanded to know where the claims originated before you would address them. It's only fair that as you have created and monetized this YouTube channel, largely to exploit the wrongdoings of Alex Belfield, that you are upfront about any wrongdoings in your own past. Oi. Fay. My. Life. So the stalker gets convicted on four separate counts, gets five and a half years in jail, He's going to serve two years, nine months initially. He's got 
civil defamation cases against him. He's got a possible fraud case against him and other stuff. And you're pointing the finger at me going, let's talk about wrongdoings in your own past. I'll use the good book, your good book, not mine. He who is without sin cast the first stone. The defensiveness shown in your behaviour speaks volumes. Greg, man, the video's coming. It's coming. Chocolate Frenzy, can I just point out that this Mark that Adrian mentions is a very sinister and nasty person. He trolls people that are giving any positive comments. So as you point out, Adrian did mock him. But in my opinion, he may have also read the vile comments that he had been slinging at people. Don't know, just my take on it. A very accurate take, Chocolate Frenzy, and I really appreciate your support. Everybody's support. It, it, the, the, the likes, the subscriptions, the comments, everything. Because without it, there would be no channel. So Chocolate Frenzy, thank you. Thank you for your support. I'm going to read sort of this, uh, this thread out. Because Ch Greg Romford, Greg, uh, responds, You make some interesting points. However, Adrian could have very easily responded to the allegations and discredited them if he was able to do so. And Chocolate Frenzy replied, Yeah, I do think he should have answered the question. Maybe he will, but I can understand why he didn't answer that particular person. You can Google it. Wasn't any great shakes, to be honest. But I think Mark was intending to align him with Belfield, which is totally not the situation. Yeah, I'm not in jail. I can pick the soap up in my own bathroom. Thank you very much. Angus Patterson. Angus. You really relish feeding off Alex and his misfortune, don't you? BBC Vulture. don't understand that, Angus. Sometimes I'm not the brightest. BBC Vulture? They sacked me. Angus, they sacked me 20 years ago because they couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle me. Some of, some of the stuff I was doing on the late night phoning on BBC Radio Cleveland. I was also networked. BBC Radio Leeds, BBC the Yorkshire stations, the North East stations, BBC Carlisle. Yeah, I did all that. But they didn't renew my contract. A, because there was an idiot manager there that I didn't get on with. Well, basically told him straight. I didn't do the Belfield-esque stalking or anything like that. I told him to his face. And we once had this argument where... <laughs> Look, I think I better leave that in the past. It <laughs> might get me into legal trouble. But he sat there saying, so... What are you going to do now? I'm off to LBC. What do you mean? I said, well, have you heard of a radio station in London? A massive radio station. The best speech radio station in the country. It's called LBC. I'm off there. How did you manage that? Well, I think it was sheer talent, to be fair. So how much are you going to make? More than you. He was an absolute moron. Your typical archetypal, um, they're basically civil servants with a microphone at the BBC. I mean them no ill will, but this one was a particular miscreant. Um, so Angus, I'm not feeding off Alex and his misfortune. It wasn't misfortune. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers and was then sentenced by a judge. That's not misfortune. That's being found guilty in a court of law, in a crown court. That's not misfortune. And please don't tell me it's freedom fighting. It's not. He's conflated the two. He's conflated the criminal court and the civil court. Now, the civil court is for defamation. 2023, that'll be picked apart. And you'll find that your Lord and Master is not a very nice person. Salt Nest Monster. Oh, Adrian, I hope Belfield gets out early so he can see the civil cases. No wonder he went 
on all of his holidays as he can't go again and criminal convictions stop you travelling to America. I don't think a long prison sentence for this guy is in the public interest. It's got nothing to do with the public interest. It's got everything to do with a court of law. He was found guilty times four in a court of law by a jury of peers. And then that's when, when he was found guilty, the judge imposed the sentence. I hope Belfield gets out early so we can see the civil cases. He's not getting out till at least 2025. That's if he behaves himself and doesn't appeal. Civil cases, 2023. Uh, Cheryl Emmanuel says... Uh, oh, hang on. I've missed a one. I need to... Uh, I need to f oh, yes. Apologies, Norman Taylor. I should have read out your very erudite comment before I get to Cheryl. Norman Taylor, Adrian, I, like thousands of others, watched a lot of Alex Belfield videos and live phone-ins. I came to the conclusion that the guy was not only funny, but very informative about life in general. The longer I watched, it became obvious he was really bitter about the BBC. And people like Jeremy Vine and seemed to rip people to shreds, such as Katie Price, even using her disabled son. I didn't realise he had been around for years, incidentally, in radio. I cannot help thinking, from someone neutral looking in, if you like, Alex Belfield basically was desperate for fame and modelled himself in his head on so many people in radio, such as yourself, comedians we know, such as Ken Dodd, Bernard Manning and Roy Chubby Brown. So basically, he really went over the top, big time, to shock. He wanted to shock his audience, especially as we now have social media. I think a lot of Alex Belfield followers, perhaps, tired of his persistent content or anger at certain individuals. And what is sad to me is when he did his live phone-ins, he came across as sincere when serious topics were being discussed. If you look at one of his famous videos in Blackpool with Katie Hopkins laughing his head off and in his element, it saddens me to think that someone who definitely has talent will be locked up this side of Christmas and for a few years to come. How strange life can be at the top. At the top of your game, yet you go and shoot yourself in the foot big time. I really hope he can cope and get any help that he needs. I agree with you, Norman. Thank you very much for that. And I think Cheryl also agrees. Cheryl Emanuel, thank you for your comment, Cheryl. Great comment, Norman. I think Alex Belfield should be contained, not necessarily in prison. Sadly, we don't have enough psychiatric beds. Therapy is needed. I agree. It's very sad seeing someone who was a good interviewer destroy themselves. I agree completely, Cheryl. I agree completely. <coughs> Excuse me. To uh, T, 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 T. I've got to be very careful how I pronounce that. Um, because the AI will just go, oh no, you say monkey things, we'll have to buy your video. Um, that's how the AI speaks. It's a computer, for God's sake. I also agree with a lot of uh, what Alex Belfield spoke about initially, the BBC and stuff. But he became too big for his own boots and felt he could do and say whatever he liked. Once I understood the scale of the stalking charges, I stopped watching him and only checked in to see the trial outcome. He's too psychologically flawed to be a serious talent, but he undoubtedly had the gift of the gab for manipulating thousands of subscribers. Thousands. Chocolate Frenzy's back again. Hi, Adrian. Really enjoy your channel. I do, however, wish your mods would block some of the more hostile trolls that attack us for leaving a positive comment on your videos. I expect I'm inviting a pile on here, but it's just tiresome, to be honest. You are a great presenter and keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you, Chocolate Frenzy, as ever. I really appreciate your kind words. Emma L says that is exactly what Belfield did on his channel as he blocked and shadow banned all negative comments. I know because he blocked me on YouTube and Twitter for calling him out. Surely it's better to leave them up unless they are really insulting and over the top. This would show the type of audience Alex Belfield attracted and others can also challenge them. I'm not a troll, by the way. I know you're not ML. I do appreciate it. I'm going to um, stop there. I could keep going on for a, uh, a lot longer. But I am going to say this. If you're interacting with the channel in whichever way you feel fit, please don't be silly in the comments. 
because people have been reported to YouTube, we have dealt with them robustly, appropriately and proportionately. Now, people will say negative things. You can say negative things about me until they get silly and then they're gone. They're dealt with. But please don't start attacking other people that want to interact with the channel in their own way. Because that's bullying and harassment. And you know what happens to people who bully and harass people? They end up in jail on four counts. And they're going to serve two and a half years. Then another two and a half, two years, nine months, on licence. And then there's the fraud. Then there's a defamation. As I keep saying, Alex Belfield is in a whole world of pain and he's not out of the woods by a long stretch. My name's Adrian Allen. Thank you for your likes, your subscriptions, but most of all your indulgence. Please ding the bell and I'll see you in the next video.